Most people who tell you they drive a 4x4 are referring more to its size than its ability. The soft rotor, crossover, SUV have all been rolled into a generic 4x4 category, even though some of those cars couldn't even make it over an anthill. When you look at it, there are very few hardcore off-road machines left, and only one that will outlive all of them. Yes, after the nuclear fallout, there will remain only cockroaches and the legendary Land Cruiser. It's been around for over 60 years now, and it remains one of the toughest, most reliable, most hard-working vehicles on the planet. It's not scared to go anywhere. It'll have no problem taking you to the places you're likely to go. It's about utility. It's about ability. But it ain't about style. It may have kept up with the workload, but it hasn't really kept up with styling trends. The Land Cruiser has recently been overhauled, although it still manages to look like something that barely escaped the 70s. But it's not an unattractive car, and thanks to its sheer size and its squared off everything, it has huge attitude. The kind of attitude that quite literally stops people in their tracks. Well, at intersections and traffic circles anyway, where the over-the-top presence of the Land Cruiser just about guarantees your right of way. Our test car has been fitted with a few extras which make this little truck even more imposing. The bull bar at the front, the step bumper at the rear, the 16-inch wheels and the load bin lining are also extra cost options. We're driving the newest of the Land Cruisers, the 79 Double Cab. Even though it has two extra doors and space for three in the back, it'll still carry a full one-ton load. At 498,000 Rand, it is the cheapest Land Cruiser you can buy, but that doesn't mean it's cheap on the inside. Given the look and the history of the Land Cruiser, you'd expect the interior to be utilitarian, and the design certainly is. You'd expect to see ordinary aircon instead of dual-zone climate control. You'd expect to see hard plastics instead of soft-touch materials. You might even expect to see the old-school immobilizer. But what you wouldn't expect is sat-nav and Bluetooth. And that's standard in the double cab pickup. In South African terms, it may be a hardcore farm dweller, but Toyota has decided that even farmers need a bit of luxury. The cabin isn't quite on par with an S-Class, but there's certainly more to it than a place to put seats and the steering wheel. Time behind the wheel of the cruiser isn't too harsh at all, and it's certainly as well specced as a lot of city cars. It doesn't mean it now prefers an urban lifestyle or that it's got soft in its old age, but the best way to describe the Land Cruiser in city terms is that it's manageable. Sure, it's got a turning circle that'll struggle to make it around the circumference of Gauteng without making a three-point turn, and its size makes it a challenge to park, but once you're used to those things, it's actually quite a lot of fun to drive. And in the city, it gets respect and a lot of envious looks, mainly from Hilux drivers. The Land Cruiser doesn't exactly feel out of place in the neighborhood, but it always feels like it's aching to get back to the bush, even though that means it'll have to go on the highway. This car is least happy on the highway, unsurprisingly. The power gets a bit thin and the steering gets a bit vague, and you start to realize that despite its quasi-luxury and its ability to carry more people, this thing is happier in the slow lane, preferably one with a few dongas and ruts and inclines. Toyota has very thoughtfully made some adjustments to the ride setup of the double cab to make it more comfortable. They've also fitted the entire range with disc brakes all round and ABS to make it safer. But ultimately, this big bucky with its 4-litre petrol engine wants to roam free in the great outdoors, where it can crawl between obstacles in far-flung places, rather than crawl between the lights in Monday afternoon traffic. Just like driving this thing on the highway makes you realize it doesn't belong there, driving it off-road gives you its reason for living. Its 170 kilowatts and 360 newton meters give you lots of low down power. Add to that the low range gearbox, its decent clearances and Toyota's decades of engineering talent and you have a car that will quite literally go anywhere. And once it's there it'll just keep going and not just because it packs a 130 liter fuel tank. Land Cruiser has become synonymous with bulletproof reliability, even in parts of the world where it is actually exposed to a lot of bullets. True, a Land Rover will get you to the same places as this car, but the Land Cruiser probably won't require a laptop and specialist mechanics to get it going again if something goes wrong.
The Land Cruiser 79 pickup double cab tries its best to be the complete package. Around town it's got the style, the spec and the attitude to make it a fun drive, although it's no fun in tight spaces or on the highway. This is not a bucky, it's not even a utility vehicle. It's a hardcore off-road machine that feels best when the going gets tough. And it certainly continues the Land Cruiser legend. The 4-litre V6 is capable on the open road, but unsurprisingly is happiest in the dirt, where it delivers low-down power to manage any situation. The uprated cabin has some surprising features like sat-nav and Bluetooth, which add comfort to its rugged ability, but the pickup takes some getting used to in urban situations.